In this video, I explain the equimarginal principle. It's a principle that helps us determine a person's actions and how someone can take the act, these actions optimally. So, the equimarginal principle says, if an activity is worth doing at all, equate your marginal benefit equal to your marginal cost. The definition of marginal is central. The, the idea of marginal is that if I want to know the marginal benefit of something, I just look at the benefit that accrued to doing one last unit of that activity. If I want to look at the marginal cost, I just look at the cost of doing one more unit of that activity. So the idea of marginal is, as I increment up by one, what's going to happen to my objective? My objective on this side would be benefit. Uh, how much does your benefit increase? How much does your cost increase? And so that is the idea with the equimarginal principle. Is that if you want to maximize some objective, equate marginal benefit to marginal cost. You are a coach on a basketball team, and you are asking yourself, how many, uh, how many shots should our star player take? Your assistant coach comes up to you and says, he should take all of the shots because he makes a higher percentage, he makes more on average, than the rest of the players on the team. Suppose that, this, that you go to this player and you ask, what is the marginal benefit of giving him another shot, and he's taking all of the shots. What you'll notice is that this player will have a lot of people guarding him. In fact, if the other team knows that everyone's uh, that the only player who shoots is the star player, then they're going to have all five people guarding that person. So it's clearly not the optimal strategy to have him taking all of the shots because there's no way that one person could be able to make uh, beat the other team single-handedly. You might as well have the other four just sit on the bench. And you never see this happen, even at the professional level, where, uh, it, where you have a clear superstar like, say, LeBron James. You might see double teams on LeBron James. You might see uh, them divert some resources on defense away from other players to guard him, because he's better. But you don't see all five players guarding one person. That just never happens. And you never see one person take all the shots. And the reason you never see one person take all the shots, even though you have a clearly defined superstar on the team, is that there is a marginal benefit to taking another shot, and there is a marginal cost. As you, as you start giving him more shots initially, he might have a high marginal benefit. But as the other teams divert resources toward guarding that person, the marginal benefit declines. In fact, it becomes more costly on the margin to try to even get it to him. You want to do this graphically. Marginal benefit or, or marginal cost. As the number of shots increases, the marginal benefit declines. As the number of shots increase, the marginal cost increases. Both phenomena, this marginal cost, you can think of as uh, trying to get the ball to the player so he can shoot. This marginal benefit you can think of as more shots. If he takes more shots, he has to take worse, uh, worse potential shots if you tell the star player to take more shots. But now notice that if we go from this amount here, or this number of shots, to this number of shots, the benefit of getting it to the star player is that much, but the cost is that much. In other words, the team lost that number of points. They made that many fewer shots. And so that's an important consideration. And the equimarginal principle says, don't go past this point where that last unit starts costing you more than it benefits you. That's why when an activity is worth pursuing at all, then we might as well go to the point where marginal benefit equals marginal cost. This is a very general phenomenon. It works well in basketball, 
Uh, it works just as well to analyze government spending programs. Does the last dollar provide more benefit than, the, than it costs um, in, in terms of social benefit? You can analyze problems that way. Um, does the last dollar that I spent give me more utility on, on this good than this other, uh, than if I spend it on another good? And so we're equating marginal benefit and marginal cost all the time when we think about optimization problems in economics. This is commonly brought out when we talk about the behavior of firms, but it applies equally well to consumers and as just as well to governments. And so this is a very general principle, but it is something very fundamental to understand and apply within economics.